What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Sorry again for missing another uh, video last week. I've been uh, getting sick a lot. I got a kidney stone. <laughs> so, uh, it's gonna be a really quick video this week. We, um... Just a couple UI things that I've developed, um... That I think are really nice. Um, so some basic stuff that isn't in... Well, at least Unity 4. I haven't used Unity 5 yet, but um, main thing is quick navigation with an analog stick, and the other is just scrollable content here when you're using the controller. So this uses some built-in Unity stuff, so you'll have to set that up. Just check out the Unity website. I'm not going to go through all that. I know that always sounds kind of harsh, like, I'm not going to do that, but um, really, just check out the Unity site. Um, to help you out one of the main things to know about unity is to not fight it unless you really need to and then it's not even like fighting it's just like you know you're doing your own thing but if unity has a way of doing things you should do that first and then figure out a way to expand on that uh, it'll save you a lot of heartache and headache and um so yeah again this is gonna be a short video uh the bulk of this is about um just providing the code uh, we'll go through it real quick, what it does, how it works. Um, it's real simple. Hopefully these are just real simple to plug in. Um, you know, the input thing is going to be real easy. Um, this, you still have to have a bit of setup. Again, you can look up on Unity to do their scrollable stuff. Did I disable mouse stuff? Yeah, it looks like it did. So, anyway, not that important. Let's get to it. So the first thing... This is my UI thing. So my player UI script, just like a main like UI thing, controls all my UI stuff, um, menus and shops and equipping and um, you know dis heads up display stuff. And I just have it all in this big old script. Here's a standalone input module. Mine is built off of this. You know, it just copies this and then just does my own thing. Uh, this is some base stuff whenever you're doing like a UI thing. You generally need this stuff here. Um, I don't know if you need the graphic recast or I can't remember. Again, just check out their tutorials. Um, you'll need an event system. And that lets you use selectables. You know, this is in the higher. Here, let's show it real quick. Oh, I don't have it activated here. That's a good one. Skills, yeah, things like that. And you'll have buttons and things that might all get, you know, created at runtime. So they're not really showing up, but. It's not too important. So you need event system. You need a standalone input module. This is the basic one. It uses joystick. Um, and then this is the one we did. Just call that my input module. The base things you have to set up. You know, left stick X, left stick Y. Um, it's your left and right, up and down. And then jump and check. Those are just the names of my buttons, but here, you know, submit button and cancel button. Now I'm going to go through all the code. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's just a lot of little variables that work together to make it a clean experience in the end. Um, you know, you may want to mess with your dead zone, some other of these values for your own feel. Turn this on. One of the main things, the reasons I did it is because rapidly going up and down was, well, up and down was easy, but going like one direction, like just tapping down, it seems silly, and I'm using an analog stick, is that you'd have to go all the way to zero on your analog, like yours. So if I like tap down, so if all the way down is like negative one or whatever on that axis, and then I let go to press down again, it's really minor, but it makes a big difference. It would eat your input in a way if you didn't go all the way back to neutral on the stick. And so you'd have to go boom, 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 boom like that. And it just feels bad. So the first thing was to 
you know, handle that. So instead of you know, waiting to go to zero, it just checks if it's greater than like the previous input. So it sets, you know, like a previous input if it goes less than. So if we're going up, then it's like the opposite. You know what I mean? So we use absolute values, so it doesn't matter which way we're going. Um, so we have our current and our previous one. And again, those get set basically if they get less. So the problem, like if you just did it, if they were different, it would be like you press down, you get greater than the dead zone. It sends an input here. And then you hold down a little bit more. You know, this is within frames of each other. Then it would get bigger. And so that would give you like a ton of down inputs. And so you didn't want that. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm not going to go through this too much. Um, it's more... It looks complicated just in a way, not in a way, but um, what am I trying to say here? It, it's easy to understand, but it looks more complicated in code. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I also have, you know, the X hold, you know, depending on if you're holding up or down, then X hold will go up. Um, and then you have a value that if it gets greater than a certain value you know the repeat start if we hold it for 45 frames you know a little bit less than a second then it'll start going down and then it'll repeat that at a rate um, that you can set here and again that's that's built into the regular ones where you can just hold up and down um, and you'll just have to mess with that yourself but really you know you have the standard setup that unity will show you you can just get rid of this one. I have it just deactivated, but you can delete it if you like, you know, remove component. Um, and then just throw your own on there, my input module. Again, we have these values here, you know, repeat start. Looks like it actually only for 15 frames, a lot quicker. Dead zone is 0.25. I like a bigger dead zone, I think, because I have a lot of old controllers, so. Um, I think the repeat rate is zero. Oh no, it's three. So every three frames, you know, it'll repeat it. Um, you can have a delay there, just like a little bit more control. It ended up not being used that much, but it's there if you want to. Um, you know, I should probably hide these, but not a big deal. Oh yeah, so, you know, edit, project settings, input, and again, this is like what you'd want for your buttons. Um, you'll have to set this up yourself. Um, it's just too, you know, game specific, so. And then in your own code, Whatever you named them, you just name them here. They're strings, so it's easy. You know, whatever. Right here, it just checks those things. Um, you know, this is all just built into the regular event system. So it's just going to, you know, do these submit handlers and cancel handlers and things like that to whatever button you're on. All that you have to set up yourself. Um, but this is just handles the navigation. So the next thing is... for the you know big lists that are bigger than the content to scroll and you can mass those out um, we'll go through it here so have your viewport and your content again you'll set this all up um, and you'll need some of this um, you know vertical layout group and um, like the masks scroll arrows if you want to use those I only have them for display like they're not interactable my own little scroll tab here this is um, I guess I should provide this as well it just updates a graphic based on you know the pos the current scroll position um, it's really minor it's just because I didn't like how the default unity one it's um, it like uses your I mean you're probably aware but like right here it uses like just your menu graphics instead of like some predefined graphics and some minor thing but Our weapon list so you'll need this scroll rec so it uses this um, you know this is a built-in unity stuff like this functionality is basically already in there it just doesn't update when you use a controller for some reason I don't understand it so it's like instead you have to pan like you know like when you're like browsing on your phone or whatever um, and so the meat of this is just updating that automatically. 
Um, so menu scroll, rec control, right here. Um, so my scroll rec, you'll have to define that. You could change it, see like right here, you could do get component, but it just depends on how you set up in your menu, that might not work um, if it's not like in that one. If you have trouble setting this up, feel free to contact me. I'm not gonna go through it in the code, it's just it's, it's game specific. I have a lot of weird like background stuff, so it's not always gonna be exact. Just check out the Unity site, it's real good. And then on a higher, you know, up on a parent, you know, have it the same object transform, you know, UI transform as the rec transforms, as the scroll rec. And so you drop in the menu scroll rec control here, um, you know, and then I just assign this here. Selected button rec. This is also really game specific. Um, I tried to make it sort of plug and play, but uh, I was getting a few errors. I believe it's because it's how I handle how I'm getting like current selected objects. It's like all you really need is to make sure it's the current, you know, selected object by the event system dot current. So you know you have the using event systems up here. Current selected game object transform as rec transform. When I go out and come back in my menus, sometimes it was messing up. So um, again, I believe that's because of my own system on how I have it set up. If you have issues with that, let me know. It should, that should be the reason. Cause the way I, I get my current selected buttons a little more, I use a combo of like the built-in Unity one on my own, so. So what does it do? You know, we grab that currently selected button. It's pretty understandable, um, or, you know, intuitive. Takes that button. And if it's outside the bounds of the, you know, open list scroll rect you know the um like the content let's see where does it get it content max where's it yeah so like the content my scroll rect that content because you assign that in your scroll rect look up here then you have your content thing and that's down here so that's like your actual like menu stuff so we oh, crack that open you know these are all my buttons that get assigned um so if it's outside the content, then it just, you know, scrolls it up a bit. Seems weird, like seems like that should be a really basic behavior, but it's not, it's not in here. Um, maybe they've updated, I you know I'm not using Unity 5 yet, so. Um, so, you know, it just takes view, viewport content, things like that. Um, and if that button that we grab here you know, it's, you know, we use this rec transform utility to screen point. If it's outside of that, then we like change the limit distance. Um, and we just scroll, scroll it right here. If you want it horizontal, you can do that too. Just add that in there. It'd be the same thing here. So you can see I'm not doing x at all so this is for up and down menus if you need to change that uh if you only need left and right then just rotate it i guess um in in here you know rotation here like this where is it i forget which one it is you know you just rotate it i know that seems silly but it would work uh it might get a little fishy you know i don't do that because <laughs> then you have to rotate everything else um but just change all these to x values and you could just double this up Good homework for you if you're new to programming and stuff. Um, you have a bit of padding here. You have the scroll rate. You know how fast it goes. You know once it's like out of view, just and then um, there's a bit of padding, so you can sort of shift it up and down a little bit. Um, so you can see when I go down here, if I go up right here, you know it. I wasn't even up at the next one. So there's like that extra padding there, so it'll scroll earlier. And that's just for you to, that's for just however you feel and any little like UI elements that you may have, um, you know, taking up space here that you need to um, consider. You know, because depending on how you set up your UI, you may have stuff that's, you know, inside like the content bounds, because um, it was easier to just like lay it on top. And so that way you can kind of just um, fudge it and make it look nicer. Um, yeah, again, there's not really much to say here. It's, um, 
just lurping, you know, based on where it is, it'll jump, like, if you came in, like, from off to the side, which is nice. Um, yeah, like, I just belabored this a little too much. Um, that's about it. You can just drop that in there. You know, set this up like you normally would. And then, wherever you have the scroll rec stuff, drop this menu scroll rec control. It's really, should be just plug and play. You'll have to assign that one thing again, like right here. You could get automatically, but you might have some issue. Um, you know, you could undo this, or, you know, if it's, this is your main menu stuff, it should just be like in your scene, and you should have a default scene. That's a new thing I just recently did. Again, don't fight Unity, like do it how they want. Um, and instead of like replacing scenes, you just do additive scenes constantly and remove old scenes. And so that way your default scene, you don't use, don't destroy and load anymore. You shouldn't do anymore. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, again, quick vid, mainly about just dropping this in there. Um, you may not want this one, but I really like this input module here. So give it a, give it a try. Um, if you're doing analog stuff, it feels a trillion times better. Like it's hard to like explain. Um, or, or it's 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 way more noticeable if you just you know do it yourself. How easy it is to scroll through these menus. Um, it's just really responsive, and it just feels really good. So thanks for watching again. This will be uploaded um, on YouTube. The link will be there as always. It's a culture attack, um, or excuse me, tylerdoke.com forward slash culture attack forward slash assets. I'm gonna start doing it so each. Video has its own little folder. It was a little silly that I just started throwing them all in there, but I wasn't thinking. So, uh, support keeps growing. It's been really awesome. Um, had a couple questions. Maybe I'll handle that next week. It seems like I answered them in text, but maybe it would be a good idea to um, address some of those. You know, the, the slash videos are always really popular, so I get a lot of questions in that. Um, and please ask them if you have them. Please hit me up on Twitter at cas underscore kicks um check out patreon too patreon.com forward slash culture attack um got a lot of cool stuff going there again if you can support in that way that's awesome if you can't just be part of the community um not necessarily my community i just mean game dev community the art community ask questions hang out if you're struggling with something reach out people want to help it may not seem like it. like you can hear that a lot um a lot of times it's just knowing where to look anyway thanks again for the support lately it's been amazing um catch y'all next time <laughs>